Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Network Merchandise Shop. Pick up your logo merchandise by heading over to abvnetwork.com, clicking on shop, and start filling your basket today. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for something for yourself, a customized gift, or logoed items for your business gift shop, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. That's the number two in the bar to go. Don't forget our friends at Neely Family Distillery now ship their unique distilled spirits directly to you. To order yours, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we complete a bracket challenge to determine which bourbon personality could make a living in acting. My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Kaylee Baker and Kathy Cool. Hey gang, what's up? Howdy. Hi. Hello. So we've got a fun show. First of all, before we get in, we've got a topic we want to talk about. Kathy wants to ask about something. But before we get to that, we got two new people, people who haven't been on these, this podcast before. So it's probably a good idea to let them introduce themselves. So Kathy, you're first. Uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself because they might not know who you are. Well, I am in St. Louis. So I've run into some of the local places that, that he goes. And I found uh, the Zoom things, uh, doing the Zoom tastings, and those are awesome. And I don't work in bourbon, but I have a lot of words. So yeah, you're I good for you're I good for a podcast. To say, yeah, you're, you're chatty, right? So yeah, that's that's a good thing. That's definitely yeah. a good thing. So, and you are you you're trying to go down the path of becoming a super fan, right? I really am. Did you guys set up like a, a timetable or a, a list of tasks? <laughs> no, we said we've got a new thing. So, uh, yes, yeah, so you'll hear it uh, next month or this month as you're listening to this, where we now have a formalized program to become a super fan. Oh, really? Yes. And you okay. may already be one because uh, all that's been recorded. You may be already be one or may not. It, uh, you'll have to listen to the show and find out. So there you go. I that's all we can say. I that's all we'll say. All right. And we also got Kaylee. Kaylee, how you doing? Hi, good. How are you guys? Good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, my name's Kaylee Baker, uh, formerly Oshoni, but Baker's a hell of a lot easier to spell. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I just got married a couple months ago. Um, I had a bourbon themed wedding. Oh, nice. I work, I work out at uh, Casey Jones Distillery in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Um, been there almost two years now. Been growing uh, this collection um, of bourbon behind me for about uh, four or five years at this point. Um, so it's just kind of consumed my life. I used to be a social worker and now I find myself, um, still social working at times, you know, being sure. bartenders for people sure. <laughs> and, uh, but I don't go home crying every night. Sometimes just a little buzzed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, so you much. Go. there you go. Well, welcome. Welcome. We appreciate Thanks. you being on. All right. Now it's time for the show. And Kathy said there's something she wanted to talk about. What is that Kathy? So I was in the grocery store yesterday and this dad had his three boys with him. And they wanted something. And he said, do you have your allowance? And I was thinking, you know, did you get an allowance? How much did you get? What'd you have to do for it? That kind of stuff. Like, were you one of the kids that got the allowance? And what was that like? Well, I, in theory, got an allowance as a kid. My mom loved to take your allowance away. So she would ding you. So I, I don't know. I got paid, you know, my first allowance was probably like 50 cents a week because I was, you know, I'm 53. So this is early 70s. I'm, you know, five, six years old, whatever. They started, it's probably 50 cents. And, you know, my mom would be like, do this. And she, you did it wrong. So you're getting 40 cents this week. And then by the end of the week, she'd always have the thing whittled down where I don't get anything. But literally, that's what she loved. I, I, I knew that. I got an allowance just so she could take it away uh, because then she's got something over your head. I'll, you know, do this or uh, you're gonna, your allowance is going to get whacked. She'd literally say it'll get whacked. And uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah she, and what she, your mother was preparing you for. Yeah. yeah. The, government. What? the government. Yes, exactly. Adult. Yeah. Yeah. Taxes. Just tax. Yeah. <laughs> So, yes, my mom used to tax me quite a bit on the allowance. So, yes. Fight with my sister. Allowance is gone for the week. Do you Not even live in your it's house? just gone. 
Yeah. Yes, you live in that house. Okay, well, there's your income uh, uh, allowance goes away. Uh, are you, you're getting food stamps virtually because she's feeding you. There, there's that. That's got to be taxed. Oh, Just yeah. Taxed well, food. and my mom also taxed gifts, too, at 50%. <laughs> so, so like my grandma would give at Christmas, you'd get a $25 check, and she'd take out twelve fifty and put it in the bank. And my, my own bank. So, oh, but as a kid, you don't understand that. And, and then as when you're finally old enough to tap into that, you're actually kind of happy she did that. But, you know, when you're seven or eight years old and you get $25 check and your mom gives you $12.50, you're angry. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. You're not happy about that. All right. Uh, yeah. Becca, how about you? Did you get allowance growing up? Oh, yeah. Um, it was chore based, obviously. Um, and so we had to do different chores around the house. Like we had, we'd have a whole list. Like Saturdays, that w- that Saturdays were not for fun when I was a kid. Like we'd wake up, we'd watch some Saturday morning cartoons, and then it was straight to chores. Chores <laughs> the entire day. Like, and she'd have ones like kind of based, like I never, ever had to mow the lawn growing up. That was a boy chore. So Eddie always cut the grass. Um, but I'd have to like vacuum and like do laundry. And Eddie did have to do those things as well on top of cutting the grass. So Eddie had a more of a, you know, mismatch of he had to do a little bit of everything. And then like the girls didn't have to do. All what about all those? Did your mom have all those birds back then? And did it involve cleaning them up? We did have, No, we didn't have any, like we did. Oh, we had to change a cat litter, which. Back when I was younger, it was just the worst chore ever. There have been improvements in cat litter. Yes, and now so, it's, so it's yes, now better. it's not too bad. Yeah, now, now it's, it's still it's, not great. It's not great. <laughs> it's, it's, it's no I, treat. I have three cats, so yeah, it's, it's no treat, but it's way better than it used to. I don't, be. I don't yeah. like doing it. But we had like a laundry room down, like in the basement, and it was like dark and like, I mean, it was Lucky. carpeted, but it's also like kind of a scary area, and like where the cat litter was is like right next to the uh, uh, the water heater. And just always like felt like something was going to like jump out from behind the water heater when you're down there, like scraping, like just cleaning the, the litter box. And it just sucked. I absolutely hated doing that. But we, I don't, I don't remember how much we got. I know it wasn't a lot, uh, but I cannot, I couldn't tell you how much money that she, uh, they'd give to us per week, but it wasn't a whole lot. A lot of the money that I made growing up was we would go to uh TCBY and we would, uh, go and look for change that people had dropped from the drive-thru and we'd walk around by there and we'd find change. And we'd also go and dig around in our, uh, our families, me and my friend Mackenzie, we go and dig around and well, her family's um, uh, the couch. Uh, we go into her parents' bedroom and we'd go and find all the change you could find in there. Um, Cause we just figured that change didn't really count for adults. And so we would just go and scrape up all the change we could and we'd use it for ice cream. Yeah. Yeah, after my dad had card games, I would always be down in the basement the next morning because they'd always drop money and stuff. So you'd, you'd find it. That was cool. So, yeah. So I, I, speaking of allowance, uh, my kid, oh, I did get allowance so based on her age. I read that's a good thing. So when she was six, she started getting allowance. She got six bucks a week, then seven, she got a raise. Um, but um, I used to put it in a jar for her that said kids money. And my kid notoriously hates anything that, that we have, anything we gave her. She doesn't, you know, just, she wants to buy her own stuff. She's very independent. So anything that's from us that we, she doesn't want it as an adult, that's clutter. Just throw it away. Don't hang on to anything, throw it all away. She's just like that. And then we've saved some things and then she does kind of come back on someone, but we found that jar recently and it still had some money in there. It had like 85 bucks in there or something. Um, and uh, I went over and had dinner with her and said, Hey, found this jar. Do you want this? And she's like, no, heck no, throw it away. And we're like, oh, good. And she's like, wait a minute, is there money in there? <laughs> and like, yes. and she's like, oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, she got the uh, yes, the money she had sitting around the house since she left. So yeah, suddenly she was very interested. In that. But I said, you got to take the jar if you want the money. So she took the jar. So there you go. Kaylee, how about you? Did you get allowance growing up? Well, I'm kind of in the same boat as Becca. I don't really remember as far as the amount. Um, I for, full on remember doing chores. My mom was a clean freak, like it, same thing as Becca. Every Saturday, it was a cleaning day, you know, Sundays sometimes too, depending on if we had company coming that week or not. Um, so I definitely like did my fair share of chores, but I think my parents were more along the lines of, yeah, you're living here for free. Like you don't get any extra money. Um, but they definitely like when I was a little older in middle school and high school would give me like money, like 20 bucks a month or something to kind of do some fun stuff with. And, and it, I don't know that it got docked necessarily if I did something bad. <laughs> it was more just like, you've got to do extra chores next week and you might get the same amount of money. Like, <laughs> I don't know. 
Um, then I remember specifically one time my grandfather, I did a chore for him. I cut a branch down with like a three inch pocket knife. And he told me if I got the branch cut down with the three inch pocket knife, that he would give me the pocket knife. And that was the first of my uh, pocket knife collection, which obviously I have a whiskey collection now, but <laughs> that was uh, that was the only memory I have of like ever receiving something for doing chores pretty much. <laughs> pocket <laughs> knife, you have to cut down the branch. <laughs> yep, it was a thick branch too, and like a little blade. It was, uh, it was no feat for a little 10 year old. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, you asked the question to what the yeah. let's talk allowance. So um, we got $3 a week and we did, okay. we had to vacuum and clean up after meals, like clear the table and uh, dust and, you know, all that stuff. And there were three girls in my family. So I did cut the grass growing up, but um, my mom would take us to the bank with our little pass books and we would put at least half yeah, in a savings okay. account every week. And she'd have us like fill out our, cause this was back when you had to fill things out, mm -hmm. right. To yeah. fill out the passbook and, and deposit your savings and everything. And so by the time I was 18, I think it was up to about $1,100. And I, I bought an Apple to C computer with it. And my dad got really mad. at me. <laughs> 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 That's what you spent your allowance on? <laughs> I know. It's like, I thought you were saving for a car. No, I got this obsolete computer. Isn't it great? <laughs> Isn't it great? Yeah, there you go. It made a difference, though. Look at you now. Look at yeah. you now. Yeah, perfect. There. I All right. can operate a computer. There are our stories about allowance. It is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? We'll start with Kaylee. Kaylee, what are you drinking there? I have a little special bottle of uh, Casey Jones. It is a um, just a regular bourbon. It's not straight yet. It's only a one-year-old. Uh, we chose a yeah. one-year-old because my boss's grandfather spent some time in jail, and uh, he spent one year his first time. So that's how long that's been in the bottle. <laughs> and it's a 111.4 proof. Okay. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. That might that might win. We'll see. Kathy, you're next. I'm going to grab the Deer Hammer. Okay. That's a new one. I've never heard of that. Yeah, this is the one that has Steve. On I'm it. on the label. Yeah, look at that. Oh. Put, it, put it closer. Yeah, show Kelly. Oh. Put it there. Wait. there. Yeah. The other way. That's a kangaroo. Oh, the other way. That's, oh, not that's, me. that's there a deer. Go. Go. Steve. Okay. <laughs> okay. Got it. Um, yeah, I'm excited to try it. It's okay. batch number 12. It's 49.38 alcohol by volume. Okay. Oh, there we go. That's interesting. Yeah. Pretty nice crisp. loud pop. Yeah. No. Well, I did pick new bottles. Okay. Oh, I, I don't have a new bottle. I've got a 1920 old foe pretty, eh, more than halfway still in it. So we'll see what, we'll see what we got left here. Not much, not much. Becca, you're between Kathy and victory. What do you got? Um, I've got one of our newest single barrels. We got in the gift shop right now over at Neely, uh, wheat emotion. Uh, obviously it's a wheat. It's 112.5 proof. Okay. Okay, very good. Ooh. Very, very good, but not quite good enough. Kathy, you got it. First show, first uh, cork pop win. So how about that? Look at that. that. Yeah. Popping all that. kinds of corks. Yeah, Becca Cheers. came at you. Cheers. She had a good one, but not a good enough. Cheers, gang. All right. We'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we got a bracket challenge to do. We're going to be looking on uh, what person from the world of bourbon could leave and start a Hollywood career. We'll do that in just a few. Hello, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, and let's talk for a moment about our sponsors, the people that make this show happen. First up is our friends at Moonshine University. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification at their office in Louisville. The information I learned through lead instructor Colin Blake and their team there is something that I continue to draw upon frequently in my role at the ABV Network. It truly is the standard of establishing a benchmark of knowledge of the bourbon industry. From history to production to brands and people, it's all there. Check out their full listing of programs, including Executive Bourbon Steward Certification, production classes if you're considering starting a distillery, and much more at moonshineuniversity.com. I also want to talk about Neely Family Distillery. Back in May of 2018, I met Royce Neely at Limestone Branches Craft Bourbon Festival. 
It ended up not only being the start of a great friendship, I started to truly learn about what makes craft whiskey so amazing. You see, I had been a bourbon drinker for over 30 years at that point, and like many people who had been drinking bourbon a long time, I was hard-coded into thinking Big Bourbon was where it was at and Kraft was on a journey to get there. Spending time with Royce and learning the things he does to make his whiskey taste better started to really get me to appreciate how things like sweet mashing, open top fermentation, pot distillation, and the grains you are using not only makes your product taste better coming off the still, but also out of the barrel as well. I still love heritage brands and they make up a bulk of my collection. But when you find a craft distiller that is truly dedicated to the craft of distilling, you are drinking some of the best whiskey out there on the market today. That's exactly what's happening at Neely Family Distillery today. Check them out on the web at neelyfamilydistillery.com, or better yet, stop by and see them at their distillery in Sparta, Kentucky. And now, back to the show. This is also Freddie Mills going underneath the alias of Danny Kennard. You can find me on Facebook at any time. Just look up Danny Kennard, but I am Freddie Mills. Trust me. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we're going to figure out who in bourbon could be a movie star. Yes, we are. So our uh, the contenders are as follows. Wes Henderson from Angel's Envy, Fred No from Jim Beam, Royce Neely from Neely Family Distillery. Jackie Zycan from Old Forester, Freddie Johnson from Buffalo Trace, Stephen Fonte from Limestone Branch, Bernie Lovers from Heaven Hill, and Jason Bronner from Bourbon's Bistro. There are our contenders. Here's how they match up. Round number one, it's going to be Fred No versus Bernie Lovers. <laughs> then we've got uh, Jackie Zycan versus oh Royce Neely. We've got uh, Jason Bronner taking on Wes Henderson. And finally, Stephen Fonte versus Freddie Johnson. So there are the matchups. Round number one, Kaylee is going to be first. That was her dog, so she is off the camera right now, so she'll be back in a second. <laughs> Freddie No versus Bernie Lovers. This is a uh, classic matchup here. This is, is it Freddie No or Fred No? It's Fred No, sorry. Did I say Freddie? It's Fred No. It's a, it's the father, the uh, current master distiller. Great voice, great voice. Done some, done some Hollywood type of stuff, been in a lot of commercials and all kinds of stuff. So Fred No versus Bernie Lovers. Round number one. Kaylee, you're first. Fred No of Jim Beam or Bernie Lovers? I'm sorry about the interruption. My dog's a jerk. Um, Hi, when you get the podcast. Go, yeah, she, she wanted to be a star. I'm so there sorry. You yes. What's a Hollywood career? Yeah. Hey, Royce, Royce, uh, you want to come in and play? Bring Royce in. Let him play this one. Yeah. Because we're missing Wait. a person. Can he play? He can play. He's he can play. in it? He would be a tiebreaker. Oh, oh, yeah. He can play because he's in it. Yeah, sure. Sure. We, we, well, I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and go with Fred No, just because I don't know Jason. So, Oh, no, it's Bernie right. Lovers. Take it on Bernie Lovers. Bernie. Oh, Bernie. Yes. Bernie. Sorry. Oh, Bernie. Okay. So still Fred No. Are you, do you want to play or, or not, Royce? Are yeah, you busy? I can do my report set. So what is it? Who do we think could leave Bourbon yes. Hollywood? Oh, God. I'm in okay. it. Okay. And you're in it. You're in it. Okay. okay. But All right. So uh, you're going to be filling in for Wes. Unfortunately, Wes had to call in six. So Kathy's going to be next. Then it'll be you. Okay. Anything where it says Wes, it'll be you. Okay. All right. Uh, Fred No versus Bernie Lovers. Fred No is up one nothing. What do you think, Kathy? Well, Fred No does have some charisma about him. But every yeah. time I've talked to him, he's always said, I hate this part. Like all the getting getting out there and telling his stories. And you know he loves it. He but loves it, Bernie right? has, yeah. Bernie, Bernie had a career a 20 years as a, as a, as a stand-up comedian. I mean, yeah. He, so yeah. I'm going Bernie. Bernie. That means Bernie's tied it up. All right. Royce, what do you think? Fred no or Bernie lovers. What do you think might have a better chance at making it in Hollywood? So I honestly think that Bernie lovers probably could be an actor. Okay. All right. So, I mean, not nothing against Fred, but I don't think Fred's leaving the industry to go be, uh, you know, <laughs> He running could somebody's, running he somebody's could. entourage. Now I'll take this back. This is Fred now. Old Fred or younger Fred, the one that was hanging out with Hank Williams Jr. Oh yeah. <laughs> he probably been old. Yeah. yeah. I'm going with Bernie Lovers. Bernie Lovers. Okay. That means uh, Bernie Lovers is now up two to one. Becca Sue, what do you think? Hey, Bernie Clinton, Lovers or Fred now? I get some crushed eyes from my absence. <laughs> <laughs> you're to run it because but kaylee already had her dog barking so okay. this is just a show full of distractions yes, yes it is yeah i, I will I, edit out none of that by the way it'll all be <laughs> it's down uh, to me right yes you're next all right so between bernie or fred to leave now 
I agree with Royce about Fred back in the day, but I also, I feel like I've already like, I feel like Bernie lovers, like just looks like he's probably a movie star already. Like, I feel like I've seen his face in numerous movies, although I know it's not been. Uh, so I'm going to go with Bernie on this. And also just cause I mean, it's makes sense with Bernie. That means Bernie moves on. Uh, he's multi-talented. He could play music too. So yeah, it opens up more, more opportunities. So, all right. This next one is uh, quite the matchup here. Jackie Zykan. Perhaps one of the world's best, most fun, uh, great people in a, in a uh, you know, in front of folks. And then Royce Neely, who famously did those commercials where he say, hey, Becca, how are you? <laughs> this is what he'd be acting like, but maybe, maybe you think there's a place for that I, round two. He acting, though, Kath- because he was, he was acting as if he was bad at, at reading. Maybe he was, <laughs> maybe that was his character. His character was, he was bad at reading. So he was a, he was a bad person All for right. commercials who he was. So, Kathy, here's where we're at. And, you know, who do you think would be uh, better at making it out in Hollywood, Jackie Zykan or Royce Neely? This is hard because I don't want either of them to stop doing what they're doing. Um, Jackie's really pretty. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think Royce just needs to still keep making good bourbon. So I'm going to yeah. go with Jackie Zykan. Jackie Sorry, Zykan Royce. goes up one nothing. Royce, Royce, what do you pretty. think? What you, oh, I know I can be an actor. <laughs> you versus Jackie, you're voting for yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, that means uh, Royce has tied it back up. Now it goes to his wife. So it's uh, yeah, Royce, Royce or, or Jackie. Who do you think would have a potentially better uh, career in Hollywood? Uh, Royce would be something else. That's for sure. <laughs> Got no doubt about that. So I think I'll go with my husband on this one. All right. That means uh, that means uh, Royce is up two to one. I'm going to say the opposite. The, the, the funny thing is these the, the, these people are, are totally different. Uh, in a environment, if just us were together drinking and having fun, Jackie's eye can would be quiet. She'd be sitting on the couch, not saying anything. Royce would be uh, all over the top. He'd be he'd be loud. He'd be the center of attention. Now you put on a camera and give us some lines. Jackie's eye can excel. Boom. She's she's dropping them. She's funny. She's she's you know got to happen. Royce, on the other hand, freezes up. So I think Hollywood, Hollywood career. It's got to be. It's got to be. They call it like Hollywood it. Royce Neely. <laughs> what do you mean I freeze up? <laughs> do you need me to play those commercials right now? <laughs> I did. Uh, that's called acting. <laughs> <laughs> now Becca. Now Becca. <laughs> Ah, that's my vote. That's my vote. So it's tied up right now. Jackie's I can Royce Neely are tied up. Kaylee, you get the fun job of breaking the tie. What do you think? Oh, so you chose Jack. I didn't even, I missed that part. You chose chose Jackie. Jackie. Okay. All right. This is hard because I know Royce personally. I feel like we're pretty good friends and the same thing. I can't play into it. The friends doesn't play into it. Yeah, I know. He's sociable. He, but he's, yeah, he's just damn good at making bourbon. And I don't know that we can take him away from that. I think, you know, Jackie has, she has the little bit of a curve of already being on Meet the Story of Bourbon, which is my favorite movie, even though it's, it's a documentary. So I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm going to have to go with Jackie. I'm very sorry, Royce. It means Jackie <laughs> moves. I've been, in, I've been in three documentaries and on national television twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the Moonshiners TV show, for God's sake. <laughs> I'm late. sorry. You have been eliminated. There you go. Out. All right, round number three. It's going to look like safer this. this way. Yeah, <laughs> Jason Bronner taking on Wes Henderson. Who do you think? Round number three. Uh, Royce, you are first. Jason Bronner or Wes Henderson? I like Wes Henderson a lot, but easily Bronner. <laughs> easily Bronner. Okay. Uh, Miss Becca Sue Bronner's up one nothing. What do you think, Bronner or Wes Henderson? To be an actor, yeah, mm-hmm. Jason Bronner. Now, can yeah. he deliver lines? Probably not. <laughs> Does it matter? No. Is it? Yeah. If I was going to Hollywood and had an entourage around me, Bronner would be in it. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not going to Hollywood I'm anymore. Not, yeah. not anymore. <laughs> so it goes to me, Wes Henderson versus Bronner. I'll tell you what, Wes Henderson has some Hollywood hair. I'll give him that. Hey, absolutely. This, this is a hair contest. Wes wins, no doubt. But it is not. It's who would do a better job in Hollywood. Bronner's kind of got a look to him. He, he dresses, you know, kind of Hollywood, I'd say. Uh, and, and, and he'd be fun to watch. I like, like Becca said, I think he'd be a train wreck, but, uh, but I'm going to say Bronner and he moves on to the next round. All right. Here's a tough matchup here. Stephen Fonte versus Freddie Johnson. 
uh, mentor mentee. This is uh yeah. So I know Stephen Fonte looks up to Freddie Johnson big time. Round number four, Miss Becca Sue, you're first. I'm first. Uh, let's see. So I'm, I'm adjusting my sunshade every once in a while here because it's I don't have shades in my house yet. Um, Freddie Johnson or Fonte. Freddie Johnson could take uh, over. You know. Um, uh, what's his name? The guy that does all of the uh, the My Planet, the documentaries, just says all like does all the voices for it. You could listen to Freddie Johnson. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, <laughs> I didn't think about him, but yeah, see, Freddie could just he could do all like the the My Planet, and all those things, and because uh, he he's just so nice. Not that that Fonte is not nice, but if it comes to acting, I do think that uh, Fonte is more of an actor than uh, Freddie Johnson is. Okay. Freddie Johnson would be loved by everyone, but he'd just be doing documentaries, the voiceovers. Okay. (laughs) That means Fonte goes up one, nothing. I'll say this. I could take Freddie Johnson and plug him into any role. And I feel like he would excel. I feel like he'd be good. Fonte would be excellent if it's playing a Kentucky Colonel or somebody like that. But if I'm like the, the the role is you're going to be a a physician based out of New York city. Fonte can't do that. (laughs) He could play a hell of a Colonel Harlan Sanders. Yeah, he was something like that. He'd be great. But okay, here in New York, well, hell, how you doing, the comforter? <laughs> he couldn't do that. I, I'm going to go with, uh, I think it would be more versatile. I'm going to say Freddie Johnson means we're tied up here one to one. Next up is Kaylee. What do you think? Fonte? Uh, well, Freddie is one of my all-time favorite people in the bourbon industry and basically the reason I am where I am today because he made me cry on his tour three years ago. Um, he does <laughs> and I think, I think any kind of person that can, you know, uh, can cure such a reaction from somebody, I think you're right. I think he could go into any role and just excel at it. I mean, he's just, he's kind of like, I don't know. He's yeah. just that person that can fit into any role. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with my boy, Freddie on this one. That means Freddie has come roaring back. He's up two to one. Kathy, you're next. Stephen Fonte or Freddie Johnson? See, I worry. <clears throat> I worry that Hollywood would hurt Freddie. Mm-hmm. That they beat him up because he's such a sweet, sweet man. Um, but Steve made some good points. We wouldn't want the bourbon industry to get tagged as like the place where people come out to play a doctor on days of our lives and do it Stephen Fonte style. <laughs> uh, I got to move Freddie up on this one. All right. That means Freddie does move on. So our final four, it now looks like this. Bernie Lubbers takes on Jackie Zycan, Jason Bronner versus Freddie Johnson. Round number five. I am first. This is really tough here. Bernie Lubbers versus Jackie Zycan. Ooh, I think they're both good in their own way. Uh, but I think Bernie with that 20 years out on the road, making a living as a stand-up comedian. Uh, I bet you at some point he, they probably talked to him about being on a TV show. At some point, somebody's looking at him for stuff like that. So I think he's just been closer to the business. So I'm going to say Bernie lovers, meaning he goes up one, nothing. Kaylee, what do you think? Bernie lovers or Jackie's I can. I'm going to go with Bernie again. Yeah. That's right, uh, pretty clear answer there yep that means bernie goes up two zip over jackie z what do you think kathy yeah i think bernie can bernie has the chops he does he does it hurts when you're from st louis like we are because jackie z is from st louis yeah i don't think i'd ever lived to we, got, we gotta we gotta we gotta look past that we gotta be legit here against jackie's i can't yeah, that, that, <laughs> i didn't that, think that, that, that existed but here it is there it is Ouch. all right this next one is an interesting one. I don't know how this one's going to go. No idea in my mind. Jason Bronner versus Freddie Johnson. Round number six. It is up first is Kelly. Jason. Bronner. I, I got to, I got to go with my man, Freddie. I'm just his number one fan. Like I'm going to keep pushing him through. Cause I think he can do it. Okay. That means Freddie Johnson goes up one, nothing. Kathy, what do you think? I'm going to stick with Freddie. I think Freddie goes up two zip. I'm really uh-huh. excited about seeing his Hollywood career now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to push him through the end. See how it does. All right, Royce. How about you? You're next. I'm going to go with Bronner. I mean, Bronner he, has life in this game. When he walks yeah. through the fields in his commercials. That, yeah. <laughs> That's acting. Okay. That is acting for sure. Okay. Uh, what do you think, Miss Becca Sue? You're next. 
I'm going to go with Bronner on this one too, just because um, it, it would be fun to see Bronner in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. That town's going to eat him alive, isn't it? <laughs> There's no way Bronner comes out of this. He, he see, he starts getting a movie career going. He's dead in, I don't know, a year and a half at the most. <laughs> at least he's past the 29 club or 27 yes. club, whatever it's called. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is a, an extremely tough one because I love Freddie. I feel like he could do good in any role. You take it seriously. He'd be he'd be the best actor that could be, but there'd be something dynamic about seeing Bronner just going crazy. And uh, yes, I, I got to go Bronner. That means Bronner moves on. Sets up a finale of Bernie Lubbers versus Jason Bronner, round number seven. Kathy, you're first. Who do you think there, Bernie Lubbers or Jason Bronner? Well, it, so here are my choices. Someone with experience in Hollywood or someone that we might enjoy watching <laughs> bit, eaten alive in Hollywood. <laughs> 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 here. I, I mean, how long till Bronner's in the tabloids? He's doing coke off uh, hookers and stuff. He's right, got a whole it. horrible thing. Bronner's going, going to Hollywood. That's okay, Bronner. Bronner <laughs> Tabloid Bronner. Got the gold ticket. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Bronner is up one nothing. Uh, what do you think of Mr. Royce? You're, you're next. I mean, Bernie Lumbers or Jason Bronner? Can't you guys see Bronner on the Wolf of Wall Street? <laughs> oh, yeah. If yeah. you can't, you, just, you don't understand film. I'm going with Bronner. That means Bronner's up two nothing. Miss Becca Sue, what do you think? Bronner or Bernie Lovers? Um, I hate to close it out, but <laughs> Bronner, you're going to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Bronner goes to Hollywood. How about that? Gosh, that, that would be the name of his first movie. Is Bronner? <laughs> Bronner <goes to> Hollywood. <laughs> I'm in Hollywood. Look at me. I'm in Hollywood. <laughs> I'm under the Hollywood sign because I'm in Hollywood. <laughs> sign my photo. <laughs> Good luck, man. First question at his press conference. Jason, how old's your son? Heaven if I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which really happened at a card game one time, and his wife was there. Oh man, Royce, how great was that? When oh, someone asked know. Broder how old his son was, and he was like, I don't know. How would I know? <laughs> he told me the last four ages on like his four roses picks. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. exactly down to the yeah, month. Exact down to the day. Oh, he got in so much trouble. It was so great because he realized after he said it, of course, she was like, What are you talking? This is your son. You don't know his age. Yeah. And it was just so in front of the guys, he just got dressed down. It was so awesome. So yeah, <laughs> awesome. he was eating like uh, Thai food or something. At <laughs> right. It was a yeah. strange scenario. <laughs> So there you go. There you go. We're sending Bronner to Hollywood. So it should be fun. So yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. All right. Well, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Kaylee, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at KayleeOBaker.com. Check the uh, episode for spelling of my first name. Cause it's just as hard as my maiden name was. Uh, <laughs> and um, always check out Casey Jones distillery, Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. We've always got some fun coming up. So very cool. Kathy, how about you? Where can people find you? I'm on Facebook at Kathy cool. K U H L. All right. Uh, Royce. Find me on Facebook and Instagram at Neely family distillery or at Neely family distillery.com. All right. Miss Becca Sue. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Miss Becca Sue. One K no C's. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find a Matt Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. The important website, though, is abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. All of our virtual events are out there. We put all of our blogs, our newsletters, past shows, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Miss Becca Sue, anything else to say before we get out of here? I just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing, we ask you to please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash the ABV network. All right. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Oops. Oops. Before we finish the show, let's chat for a moment about Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you just want to experiment on a small scale on the stove in your kitchen or try your hand at a bigger setup in the backyard, Moonshine Still Pro can help. 
They have different still offerings as well as accessories and even grains from Goldstone Mill to help you make whiskey on par with what you get from your favorite distillery. They can even assist with a DIY still project by supplying some of the parts you can't make yourself. Check them out at moonshinestillpro.com. At the ABV Network, we're lucky enough to have some great friends. Amongst those friends is the Goldstein family, owners of Goldstone Mill. Goldstone Mill is a full-service mill offering a variety of heritage and heirloom grains. Their unique approach of working with mills around the country allows them to offer you affordable shipping opportunities to meet the unique needs of your distillery or brewery. They will consult with you to ensure the grains you are selecting meets the unique flavor profiles you are looking for. If you are a home brewer or distiller and you're looking for the grains that your local distillery or brewery uses, Goldstone Mill is the place to look. Check them out on the web at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or shoot them an email at hello at goldstonemill.com. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.